Well, I got a confession, folks. I did not finish the first Resident Evil. Yeah, I know, I promised a bunch of Resident Evil games in October, and most of those are probably going to come out in November. I do apologize, my work gets very hectic in October. I'm also trying to get a review of Bioshock and a few Bioshock videos done, too. Anyways, one other thing I wanted to try, though, was the Resident Evil HD remake that I got with the Humble Bundle. And, well, I stopped playing it after a few hours because I haven't been this bored or frustrated with a video game in quite a long while. It's worse than Pokemon Stanky Poo. This Resident Evil remake, it's just not that fun to play. It violates my first commandment of video games now that I'm an adult. Thou shalt not waste my time with bad game design and bullcrap, or else I'm going to take a proverbial axe to your game faster than a protagonist in a zombie movie takes an axe to an undead person's skull. So let's break it down why I did not like this game. But first, let's get to the actual good parts. The game does an excellent job of setting up a scenario that's both scary and terrifying, but at the same time not so over the top that I want to quit, kind of like I do with Five Nights at Freddy. The music, graphics, the way the enemies act, it just does a great job of creating a tense situation that does give me chills. And again, like a good horror game in a movie, it's scaring and unnerving, but it doesn't make you want to stop watching it because it goes over the top. So Capcom here earned every ounce of praise about the game's thrill and chill, and I understand why a lot of people really like it for that. The story in the plot takes place in a mansion that has a whole bunch of wicked puzzles and problems you have to overcome to get to the next area. Throw in a few zombies that come back after a while even harder to put down, and the game can be quite tough. However, my problems aren't with the puzzles. There are multiple things that just come together that tick me off. First, I picked Chris Radfield. This must be during his pre-steroid days. And I hear most of my complaints wouldn't affect Jill as much because she has a few more item slots. And more on that later. This game has a pre-placed camera which is done at the worst angles and sometimes makes it impossible to tell if I'm going east, west, north, or south. It feels random and this game makes getting it around harder than it's supposed to be. It also makes aiming almost impossible, but that would be livable. What pissed me off was the item management. And before anyone lectures me, Yes, I have played through Resident Evil 4. I know there are actions and there are survival versions of this franchise, and it started out as a survival game. I'm playing through 2, and I do realize you do have to make decisions about what you hold and what you leave behind, and I'm fine with that, as long as it's not freaking idiotic in its design. Guess what this game's item management like? It's idiotic. The amount of slots is ridiculously small. You can't even hold key items, nonetheless, you know, items that you actually have to use to survive against the enemies. To make matters worse, you can't combine items either. Oh, and one of your slots has to be taken by an ink ribbon if you want to know, save your game. Oh, but it gets worse. You can't drop items easily and you can't just combine them on the fly. Well, I'm low on an ammo. Oh, look, a clip. I'll just put that in my gun that's completely empty. You can't do that. You have to have an empty slot to pick it up. But my gun's empty. I can just combine it and I'll still have an empty slot. And I can go on my merry way. No empty slot. You can't use it. Fine. I'll just run away from the zombies instead. Oh wait, here's an interesting trap with the real key, and if I don't put the fake one in the trap, the trap will spring and get me. Well, I got the fake key, I'll just switch it around and go on my way. You don't have an empty slot, you can't get the key. Oh come on, if I switch it out, I'll have the same amount of items I had before, so just let me do it. No, you gotta go put something away in a crate. 
but that crate is a 10 minute trip. There's no monster, but that's still 10 minutes of me going through the mansion, trying to figure out which direction I'm going through. Plus dozens of the same looking door opening animations. Oh yeah, the door animations get old to look at. Understandable why they're there. In the 90s, it helped hide the load time that they had to do because the game was on the optical disc. But I have this downloaded on a SATA disc drive with the option of putting it on a solid state. I don't need these things to hold the load times. Please let me skip. Nope, you can't skip those. And you can't switch out the items without an empty slot. Get moving if you want the item to move on with this game. I got a better idea. I fixed your logo there, uh, Mr. Resident Evil Suckage. Look, if you're looking for a game that has some good thrills, you might like this game. One one with great gameplay, you're just looking in the wrong place. I got bored playing this, and when I can think of the several games from Capcom I could play in honor of this holiday, like Devil May Cry, Dead Rising, and then other ones like Castlevania in the Witch's House, which oftentimes have good thrills plus great gameplay, I wouldn't want to spend another minute on this snooze fest. Now when I could at least be playing through Resident Evil 2, a game that actually does have the survival horror item management, but it does it right. Letting me combine things on the fly, letting me drop things quickly, instead of this stupid bullcrap of I having to run across the whole area to just find a freaking item box, and not giving me enough slots to do jack crap. This game gets a 1 out of 5, don't pick it up, recommendation from me. In the meantime, please subscribe to my channel and I will be taking a look at Resident Evil 2 in the future, a game so far that is worthy of my time, even if it's going to be coming out probably in the middle of November as far as my review goes. <laughs>